Have you ever struggled with confidence? Like you just didn't have the courage or the assurance to trust in yourself? Let's be honest, we've all struggled with confidence at some point in our life. And if you haven't, you're probably not telling the truth. You may not be struggling with it now, but you can pinpoint different times and areas in your life where this was a real thing. The definition of courage is a feeling of assurance that is attached to your own qualities and your abilities. Essentially, it's being able to trust in oneself. And some synonyms of that is assurance, courage, dependence, reliance, and certainty. But we can't talk about confidence and not talk about the opposite of that thing, which happens to be self-doubt. If you don't have confidence, you probably have some self-doubt going on too. The definition of self-doubt is the lack of confidence in yourself and in your ability. You see how confidence is in the definition of self-doubt? Well, let's look at some synonyms of self-doubt. Insecurity, distrust, uncertainty, hesitation, disbelief, these are all things that we experience when we are not confident. And the thing that I love about confidence is that it is a characteristic that we all want to embody, that we all want to experience because having confidence can help you in a number of areas in your life. I don't know one person who doesn't have confidence and it isn't going to help them with their family, with their marriage, with their work, with their business, with showing up in the community, with fill in the blank, whatever that is for you. So confidence isn't just this one little thing that is in one area of your life, but once you have confidence in one area, that can trickle on over to other areas of your life and you can look up to be a confident person overall. And this is why I had to bring the confidence coach to y'all to break down some things that we all need to know about self-doubt, about confidence, how to manage that thing, what it looks like internally and externally. I am so excited that I have one of the best of the best on today's episode. Not only is Jason Phillips a licensed clinical social worker, but he is also the host of the Peace and Prosperity podcast, which I was a guest on. He is a college professor. He's a public speaker. He's been featured on platforms like WebMD, Forbes, and Oprah Daily. He is the man with the master plan. So please allow me to welcome to the Keandra Jackson Show, Jason Phillips. Jason, 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 welcome to the Keandra Jackson Show. I am so excited and so thrilled to have you on today's episode. Welcome. Listen, thank you for having me here. I'm like, I'm with a celebrity, so, and my coach. So it's like, it's the best. Not a celebrity. I have to say that you are the first, you going down in history, you are the first male expert that I have had on the show that has hair. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's how I got tagged in it. Yeah. I'm Everybody else yet. has been bald for some reason. So you're going down in history as the first of the first. But nonetheless, I've been talking about confidence and self-doubt throughout this whole entire episode. And I had to bring on the expert. When I think about confidence, self-doubt, high achievers, all of these things, I think of you. So I think that this is going to be a really powerful conversation for the people who need some tools and some strategies on how to boost their confidence and to move away from self-doubt for sure. Let's get into it. Let's do it. Okay. You ready for the first question? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so what are three quick strategies that you can share with my audience on how to do some real internal work around confidence because we think about it and we see it kind of like on the outside and you know things that you can do to boost your confidence get your hair done get your nails done you know stuff like that get a haircut but we don't think about some of those internal things that we have to do in order to build that confidence and for it to stick so can you share with us some strategies on how to do the real work internally for that to happen so I'm going to say doing the real work, it does take work. And sometimes that can be challenging. It can be overwhelming. So the first thing I would say is we have to acknowledge past trauma. There's some things that we've been through or you've been through that we don't recognize is still playing a role in how we show up today. And until you start to peel back those layers and really go there and acknowledge who hurt you, how they hurt you, how it's impacting you today, it'll be hard for you to be truly confident in who you are until you go back and do that work. You gonna start off with a doozy. He said, do your own work. Deal with your trauma. You got issues. 
face them head on. What else would you say is some other things about the internal work that we can do to kind of like build that confidence? Yeah. So the second thing I'll say is get comfortable being uncomfortable. You know, to be confident, as you know, you've spoken to thousands and, you know, been on big stages, that takes confidence. But also it means there's some times where you may be uncomfortable and you're going to have to get comfortable being uncomfortable, knowing that if you have perfectionistic tendencies, you like to have control over things, things are going to go wrong. And that's okay. As long as you can still show up despite it and you know, hey, it may be challenging, but I'm going to still do it. And, you know, I'm going to put my best foot forward and let it rock. The secret. Go ahead. I don't think nobody else knows. So this is this is straight off the press. You probably heard me say this because obviously I'm your coach. Mm -hmm. um, but I get nervous all the time when I speak. I know you just mentioned like, oh, she, you know, you are on big stages and you've been on TV and all of that. Even when I do shows like this, even when I go live on social media, every single time I have to get in front of an audience, I get nervous. And so people don't know that though on the outside looking in, but it does happen. You're comfortable with it. You're, you're still an expert. Cause like we were talking before we started the show and you know, just chopping it up. And then as soon as you hit record, it's like, boom, it's like the lights went off. I was like, oh snap. Okay. This is what it's like to really be in, you know, share a stage or be in the presence of somebody who's a true expert and you still do it no matter how you feel. And nobody would ever know unless you tell them. I just told on myself. Yeah, but it's all good. So and you might have seen the video I posted. This was from some years back when I first started recording and I was so nervous. I didn't know, but I didn't blink. So yeah, in the video, I'm just, you know, saying my little spiel, giving some some tips and things. And one of my homies, he's a uh, he's a comedian. He's like, what's up, man? They they cloned you. You didn't blink. So, so the next day I, I recorded another video. I got the blinking out the way and I still went on with the message. So you just got to get comfortable with it. Yeah, I love that. I think there's going to be a lot of people listening to us that resonates with it. You know, like you see people on big stages and, you know, doing all of these amazing things, but you don't know what they go through, you know, on the back end. You don't know what happens when the camera is off or before the camera gets turned on. I was having tech issues right. before we started <laughs> this, right? So right. you never know what's going on in people's lives. So before we move on to the next question, is there an additional strategy that you would share outside of doing your trauma, doing your work? Mm -hmm. getting uncomfortable is there anything else you think that we should know about confidence this really comes from knowing who you are so you're going to have to journal do some self-reflection but a lot of times we get uh kind of coerced into being like somebody else whether that's somebody we've seen on tv a family member but you really confident when you can just show up like and be you you know you can wear what you want to wear you can use the language you want to use you can just be yourself and it makes life easier, but you have to know who you are. Like we were talking about the, uh, you know, me, I, I talk slow sometimes and that's just, I'm cool with it. Right. I, I don't, I'm not letting that bother me because I know I still give a good message. I think you talk slow. So I don't know who told you that, but <laughs> it, hey, is, it is what it is. Right. Let's, let's get it. I think you really mentioned some some powerful things that is really helpful. And I think even to move into our next question, it kind of goes into what I was just talking about before. I think on the outside, if someone's watching you, if someone, if you're at a meeting at work, if you're speaking on stage, if you're on the Keandra Jackson show, whatever <laughs> you are doing, there's a way that people perceive you, right? They're either going to perceive you as confident, like, oh, Jason is killing it. He's owning the stage. He's blinking this time. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and then there may be some other things that you're doing with your body language or some nonverbal cues that, you know, might be an indicator to other people that you're not as confident. So what would you say? Because we've talked about the internal stuff. So what would you say is like an outward expression of how other people view us with our body language in regards to being confident? Yeah, so I was, I'm gonna start with your walk. Like how you walk, you know, you walk on stages, you walk into a room, just how you walk in general, that kind of lets somebody know how confident you are. And I noticed this like as a young person, you know, sometimes people walk and they walk with their head down. It's what they do, right? They walk with their head down. And innately, I'm like, no, I can't do that. 
one it just it doesn't look good it doesn't feel good like hold your head up and you hear that that statement sometimes hold your head up keep your head up high but really that means something when you are proud you know who you are you're sure of yourself you're gonna walk and that strut is gonna be there you're gonna have like a glide i don't care if you got a, a, a gimp you know a messed up gait you're gonna pimp that thing out and be so comfortable with it people have no choice but to respect you it's like the authenticity piece that we kind of talked about but also too i think that impacts how people treat you right so For if sure. it's like if you're walking in with your head down, you just kind of like, oh, I don't want to be seen. Well, it's like, well, people gonna treat you like that. But when you walk in, head up, chin up, confident, you're looking good, smelling good, you know, right? You don't necessarily feel the confidence. You're exuding it in hopes that that is portrayed and that other people can feel it on on the outside. You know, I have um, ritual that I do before I get on big stages, and you know, I have to like gas myself up. I have to like say positive affirmations to myself, mm -hmm. you know, to get yep. that energy and that, you know, that flow pumping. And people don't even know that behind the scenes that I'm a, I'm a little nervous, but once they see me on stage and have those conversations with me, you know, the energy is there and they would never know. And so I think holding your head up and walking with confidence is key. What else? These are good. What yeah. else would you say <laughs> is a non-verbal QR body language thing that kind of just, you know, we need some assistance so Kind of like, you know, when you always being real fidgety with your hands, you fixing yourself and it's like, wait, just settle down and, and relax. Be you. So, you know, I, I don't know if you know this about me. I'm a huge, I'm a Snoop Dogg fan. Before I go on stages, I'm listening to the Doggy Style or the Chronic. Most of the times, one of those two, just to get me in, in my zone. And it just relaxes me from, from head to toe. So when people are really like fidgety, they don't know where to put their hands, they don't know what to do. Again, eye contact, if they have poor eye contact, that's an indicator that you're probably not sure of yourself. Say this, but he low-key said West Coast <laughs> is the best coast. That's what he said. <laughs> but I digress again. Right. So I think being, you're right, fidgeting, it, like you have to figure out what you're doing with your hands. Um, I'm naturally a speaker that talks with my hands. You're gonna get hand motions every time I talk. Yeah. I'm just that animated, but you have to figure out what that thing is for you. And especially eye contact. I know we're in a culture where eye contact is huge. If you're not looking mm -hmm. at someone directly in the eye, it could convey disrespect, right? right? But then there's other cultures where looking at somebody in the eye is disrespectful. I know some Asian cultures too, right? So you have That's to be true. aware of your audience. You have to be aware of who you're around, what you're mm -hmm. doing, and understand that everybody is going to experience you differently because if not that can get you in some trouble this extra one you didn't ask but i'm gonna give it to you like when it comes to like your outer appearance too you know you can tell if somebody's well groomed if they care about themselves you don't have to always have a fresh cut or the latest hairdo but take pride in how you look and how you show up like comb your hair you know make sure you, you smell good those things matter big time physical appearance is key yep <laughs> We, we know that for sure, because people will treat you differently if, for sure. if you're not dressed appropriately and spelling yeah, appropriately. You, you, you all wrinkled up, like why are you wrinkled? <laughs> <laughs> like I know we don't necessarily use irons these days, but you need to put some heat on those clothes, okay? <laughs> Listen, I know I'm still ironing, but I know a lot of women, y'all can get away with not ironing a lot. I'm not even gonna lie, this shirt was wrinkled this morning <laughs> and I threw it in the dryer. And I yeah, said, I ironed this shirt. Are we going to get the wrinkles out with the heat? Yeah, and we're going to take it from there. Me. So I can't remember the last time I ironed, but I also care about, you know, presenting well and looking well. So I'll make sure that I am trying my best to look as appropriate as possible, for sure. Yep. Yeah. So think about how social media and the internet hmm. has been cray cray lately. Okay. I mean, we have people on there fronting, pretending like they got all of their stuff together, right? And we peel back the layer and they're not as confident as they appear to be on camera. Um, and do we have other people who really are truly confident, you know? And mm -hmm. so I'm wondering from you and just hearing from your perspective, how does the internet, how does social media play into our confidence? Does it increase it and we get more energy like, oh, okay, I can do this? Or does it kind of just diminish that and make us doubt ourselves more? 
say it depends. It kind of depends on who you follow and who you resonate with. Like there are some people like yourself. I have some other friends and colleagues I follow and I'm definitely inspired, intrigued when I see y'all out there killing it. But if you're struggling with your confidence, you could look at somebody and think, wow, how come I'm not doing that? You know, you start comparing yourself real quick, looking at, you know, how they dress, how they look, the family they have, the cars they drive, the vacations they, they take. And sometimes they are fronting, like you never know. You know, I remember one time I did a live with somebody and the, the camera accidentally flipped. And, and when that, when it flipped around, you just saw a bunch of craziness. And I was like, oh man. So it just goes to say, sometimes people are not who they portray to be on social. But we take it for like it's gospel and oh man, I want to be like them. I want to aspire. But you never know, like, is this really true? Is this person really the person they say they are? Very true. Because I think people put the best parts of themselves on social media. No one is going to be like, oh yeah, my house is raggedy and I barely could pay my bills. And you know, like mm -hmm. nobody is really going to do that, especially if they see themselves as an expert or someone in this field or they have like a large following. And so I think your advice on making sure that you're following the right people is mm -hmm. key, right? Because if you find yourself being on social media and every time you're on your feed, you know, you get off and you're feeling sad and depressed and you're comparing yourself to the next person, then that's an indicator of what Jason just said. Then maybe the people that you're following isn't the best people that's going to help boost your confidence and be inspired by but if the opposite is true then you know that you're on the right track because you know people we're people so like we go through stuff we, we're therapists but we still go through things we have issues we have problems so we don't get on social media just acting like you know we're just got everything laid out i'm so perfect no people know one they're not they're gonna, not gonna respect you like i remember remember uh clubhouse i guess i can say or that app I was on there with a, a panel one time and they asked us a question like, you know, how do you deal with, with your problems or something like that? And one of the clinicians said, you know, I don't have problems. And somebody DM me like immediately was like, man, this fool lying, like get him off the stage. So people can see like, it's okay to just be you, like be human. Be, be human. I mean, there isn't a person on this planet who doesn't have problems. So the fact that somebody would say that and a therapist, yeah. go ahead and give me your license right now because <laughs> this, is, this is out of pocket, out of control. Even I got problems, okay? Right, everybody got, we got them. Yeah, I mean like Jason and I was supposed to link up because he was doing a speaking engagement here a few weeks ago and my life got chaotic and crazy and some family issues was going on and I'm like, bruh, I can't meet with you, you know, as much as I want to link up and connect and have dinner and hang out, like I just couldn't do it, you know? And so life be life thing. And I think the authenticity of being real about that resonates with the people who get it. And you know, you didn't say it, but like that takes confidence too, to say, no, I can't do this you know, whether it's family, whether you just don't feel like it, whatever, being assertive and, you know, speaking up for yourself, that takes a lot of confidence and not trying to jam yourself up with, you know, a, a zillion things and feeling so stressed out trying to people please. So I respected you for it. I get it. And don't people please. Whoop. <laughs> That's another video and another topic that we need yeah. to do on this channel. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna have you part back. I'm gonna have you back for part two so we can talk Definitely. about people pleasing because that is something that a lot of people experience. And I know that you work with a lot of like high achievers and the people who, mm -hmm. you know, have a lot on their plate and they they manage a whole bunch of things. Is there anything, before we play a game, because you know yeah. we will have a little fun <laughs> on my channel, before we play a, a little game, is there anything that you wanna leave my audience with in regards to confidence or self doubt or anything that we haven't talked about yet that you think would be helpful for them? I would say, something that people need to know like it's okay to really be you like lean into yourself your whole self like your personality your wants your standards it may take work because you might not be used to speaking up for yourself in that way but set the bar where you want it and step into it like you're your own biggest resource and you can do that i think when you're confident and you're your authentic self too that attracts 
the people that you're supposed to impact. You know, and they say this, right? Before you get into the game, confidence is sexy. So when, you know, somebody's out there trying to, you know, attract that that special person, yes, you want to look good, smell good, feel good, all that too, but it's confidence that helps you, you know, snatch that mate or that partner. You got your wife? What's up? Hey, <laughs> I'm just saying, right? I had to step up. I know there's going to be a whole bunch of people listening who want to know how to stay connected with you, who want to learn more about confidence, self-doubt, get some of your content. So please share with my audience where people can stay connected with you, where they can follow you and all of the above. Yeah, so they can follow me on all social media platforms at J Phillips MSW. They can listen to the podcast, which you've been a guest on, the uh, Peace and Prosperity podcast. Or if y'all want to work with me, visit jasonlphillips.com. I love this. I love this so much. So are you ready to play a little game with your girl? Let's get it. Let me get my cards here, my fancy dancy cards. So Jason, we are about to play a game called This or That. And this is the lightning speed round. So that means you got to give me your answers quick. You can't be taking okay. forever. Are you ready? I'm ready. He don't sound ready. He I'm don't ready. sound ready, y'all. He don't sound ready, but we about to see. Question number one, unlimited sushi or unlimited tacos? Oh, unlimited tacos. Okay, you gonna do sushi? Okay, got you. Um, super strength or the ability to fly? A fly. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to <laughs> question you. Number three, <laughs> exploring space or the deep sea? Definitely the sea. Okay. Rather find a hidden treasure chest or discovering a new species? Mm, the treasure, uh, treasure chest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to know that new stuff. <laughs> he said, I don't want to learn nothing new about what's about to come out. I don't even... <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> being able to control fire or being able to control water? Mm, water. Okay. He pushing back the ocean. Yeah. He's going to be doing all <laughs> kinds of stuff, y'all. <laughs> Number six, living without music or living without movies? Ooh, without... The, the second one. Movies. Movies, yeah. I can't live without music. He can't deal without Snoop Dogg, <laughs> is what he's saying, y'all. Basically. <laughs> never having to sleep or never having to feel hungry. The first one, never having to sleep. So you would, you know what? <laughs> we gonna talk about this off camera because there's no way. <laughs> Breathing underwater or walking through walls? Oh, breathe underwater. It's, that's still tough for me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Living in a world where it's always summer or where it's always winter? The first one, summer, all day. All day. So what's going to happen with spring? Winter is necessary. We need winter. Oh, that's why I moved from Detroit. I love the D, but I'm straight on the winter. That means you need to move to Cali because technically we got like the best weather. Yeah, it's no humidity, but it's still warm. So you, you're right about that. I told okay. my wife, I said, she won't sweat her hair out. Period. Because <laughs> as a black woman, that's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> and last but not least, would you rather have a endless supply of your favorite drink? Okay. Or never do chores ever again? Definitely never do chores. All I drink is water. <laughs> that is too funny i love this thank you so much jason for being an expert on the keandra jackson show for having a little bit of fun with me and you already know i'm gonna have to bring you back for part two yeah thank you for having me this was dope and it was fun I know I say this for every episode, but didn't Jason bring the fire? I mean, I hope that you took something away that you can put in your back pocket. I know I have, and I was a part of the episode, making sure that you walk with your head up, making sure that you are internally doing the work and working on your own trauma, making sure you're looking good and smelling good, making sure your tone of voice and your words and the things that you say matches is so important. I think when you start to do the internal work, confidence just starts to 
to bubble up and it oozes out of you. No matter what anybody else says about you, no matter what anybody else's perception is about you, you can build confidence at any given point in your life. Even if you are someone who has never had confidence before, even if you're somebody that has a little bit of confidence, even if you're somebody that has confidence here, you can always go here. I think that there is a fine line though between confidence and arrogance, confidence and pride. We didn't talk about that in this episode. Maybe we will come back for a part two to discuss that, but I hope something that was said by him, by me, by we <laughs> help you. So please make sure to like, comment, share this video with someone who needs it. I will see you in the next episode of the Keandra Jackson Show. Be blessed. Bye.